And the thing that holds anybody back from buying Bitcoin is uncertainty about its classification and the way it will be treated by regulators. Hello guys, welcome to another exciting video. Today we will be looking at how MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor bets billions on Bitcoin and loses. Be sure to stay till the end to hear the full story. If you have a two-year time frame, Bitcoin's winning. It's winning over four years, it's winning over six years, it's winning over eight years, and I just like to be in business more than two years from now, so that's why we did it. When Michael Saylor was asked why he staked the future of his business on Bitcoin, he responded that he had no other option. MicroStrategy Incorporated struggled to compete with software giants in 2020 as its stock price remained unchanged. Michael Saylor stated that they were either going to die a quick death, a long death, or adopt a riskier plan. He chose to invest heavily in Bitcoin. That choice had a disastrous result. But So why not have waited for better timing, no? We don't run the company based upon Bitcoin volatility. In light of growing losses related to Bitcoin, MicroStrategy said that Mr. Saylor will resign as CEO, a role he has held since 1989. On August 11th, 2020, the company revealed a plan to convert $500 million, or half of its corporate reserve, into Bitcoin. This was the start of his affair with Bitcoin. Since then, it has doubled down once more. A total of $3.45 billion in debt and loans were raised by MicroStrategy. It issued shares worth $1.44 billion. The company bought Bitcoin with all of it. I think that... Uh the way to think about investing in Bitcoin is you should only invest what you're going to hold for four years or longer. The choice seemed to be working for a while. By November 2021, the price of Bitcoin has increased from $17,088 in August 2020 to almost $99,000. The day before its announcement, MicroStrategy's stock was trading at $124 US dollars. On February 9th, 2021, it reached a record high of 1,273 US dollars. It impacts two types of people. It impacts people that are short-term investors that they want to make a quick buck or they just never want to lose money. What's caused uh, the crypto crash? I think that uh, it was triggered first by um, the interest rates, right? The, the tightening of the Fed. MicroStrategy, however, reported its seventh drop in profits in the eight quarters since it began purchasing Bitcoin on Tuesday. This time, there was a significant loss of $1.44 billion, largely due to the price drop of Bitcoin. On the same day, the company revealed that its president, Fong Li, would also become its CEO and Michael Saylor would assume the new position as executive chairman of MicroStrategy. Two years ago, we promoted... Uh a gentleman, Fong Li, to be the president of the company. Through Tuesday, shares of MicroStrategy had fallen 78% from their high and by 49% for the year. Approximately 130,000 bitcoins, worth approximately $4.3 billion at the current market price, are held by the corporation. Its market value is approximately $4.45 billion. In essence, MicroStrategy has evolved into a Bitcoin holding company with a software company attached that generates revenue. Losses at MicroStrategy reflect the unpredictable nature of Bitcoin. According to accounting principles, the business is required to evaluate the worth of its Bitcoin holdings every quarter and record an impairment fee if the price falls. And the thing that holds anybody back from buying Bitcoin is uncertainty about its classification and the way it will be treated by regulators. A series of such charges totaling around $3.5 billion have been incurred by MicroStrategy. After Saylor stated that he thought of Bitcoin as an inflation hedge, MicroStrategy started investing in the cryptocurrency in the summer of 2020. As the price of Bitcoin rose that year, the company's shares increased by more than 170%. However, aftermarket trading saw a 2% decline in MicroStrategy's stock. Comparable to Bitcoin's downturn, the stock has dropped by nearly 50% this year. Mr. Saylor continues to have confidence in both his plan and Bitcoin despite the dangers and criticisms. He said in an interview last week that despite the dangers involved, the strategy has enhanced the company's prominence and that the price is still much above its pre-Bitcoin levels. With all this being said, what is your take on this? 
Do you think it is safe for MicroStrategy to continue investing in Bitcoin or not? Write your thoughts in the comment section below and let me know, and I'll catch up with you in the next one. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to receive all the updates so we can grow together. See you all next time.